afternoon. Michael Malice here, and let that be your welcome for the next hour. We have a very, very special episode. Today, we've got Lisa De Pasquale, who's the author of the SJW Handbook, but good friend. And more importantly, you lost 100 pounds. 110 pounds. 110, mazel tov. And the reason <laughs> we're doing this episode is my good friend, Eric, died in August. And he had always suffered from morbid obesity all his life. He got it somewhat under control, 46, heart attack. And I've always wondered if there's something I could have done, if there's something it was my place to do. So you agreed to this episode because there's Lisa's out there and there's Michael's out there and maybe this will help them either get help or know what to do, or maybe there isn't anything Michael could have done. Uh, but at least now I'll have the knowledge um, that there's nothing I could have done. Mm -hmm. So how you are, you're a shorty. Yeah, I'm 5'4". Um, my, at my heaviest weight, I was 320 pounds. Wow. Um, I obviously still have probably about 65 pounds more to lose. That would put me in the normal. Um, Which is still heavy in America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 145 for my height is is considered normal. 150 is considered overweight. So okay. it's a very close margin. <laughs> um, how did you, so let, you've always been heavy. Um, yeah, well, except for the day I was born. And actually, this is an interesting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an interesting stat is that um, a lot of preemies do end up being overweight because they're always being overfed. And I was a month premature. Um, and so up until about four or five, um, I was underweight. And then I really started to be an overachiever. <laughs> is this, did you have like bad eating habits in your household or is this something, how did that happen? Is your family heavy? Uh, no, they're, my family isn't heavy. I think it was mostly, um, you know, when I came home from school, um, I had a single mom. So when I came home from school, this was, you know, back in the eighties when it wasn't a big deal when a seven year old was by themselves sure. in latchkey the house. Kid. Yeah, latchkey kid. Um, and after, you know, having like public school lunch and um, coming home to an empty house, it was just like a free for all. So I would basically have like a second lunch or first dinner or, you know, whatever. And that was sort of, I thank you. Um, that was my like alone time. And I would, I think I was just bored. I wasn't, you know, doing anything. I was alone and I would just become like a snacker. What kind of foods were in your household? Um, Mostly easy foods. Um, like we would go to like the day old bread store. I mean, like I said, single mom. Um, and, you know, not, not, not poor, but lower middle class. So we go to the day old bread store. Um, so we'd buy like a bunch of loaves of bread and put in the freezer. I'd like to, I mean, I was like an expert at microwaving frozen bread until the bread was perfect. Okay. <laughs> So it could defrost. So bread, you're snacking on bread. Bread. Um, they would. She would. My mom would get like bulk, um, like fried chicken patties, um, like that would be you know for dinner, and I would you know have like a chicken sandwich, and then maybe one sandwich was enough, then a second sandwich. Um, we weren't. We didn't have a lot of junk food because like the cool stuff when I was a kid, like the same as now, like Lucky Charms. Yeah, we didn't have any yeah. any good cereal. We had off-brand cereal that came in like the big old plastic bag, you know, if we even had cereal. Um, so it was a lot of like carb heavy. Um, and I think that might be part of why I was going for quantity because it didn't taste yeah. like particularly good, you know? So if you're getting heavy that young and you actually use the word fat, do you hate that word heavy? Does it sound like a euphemism to you? Um, not the, not, the only one that bothers me is Zofdig. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's too old timey? Yeah. <laughs> um, how were you treated in school? Um, I mean, I was definitely like made fun of at school, probably around um, maybe eight or nine. Um, I think my mom saw something in the newspaper that the university, I, I'm from Tallahassee, Florida, Florida State University was having some sort of like clinical trial for overweight kids. And so my mom got me into that. And they had these things that were like cookies. Um, and you had to have them as like a meal replacement. Okay. So I put peanut butter on top of it. Sure. <laughs> Which is very fattening. Yeah. And, you know, this is like no one was paying attention to sugar or carbs. I don't even know in the 80s what it was. Um, but it was like a cookie. Like it wasn't anything um, like full of protein or, you sure. know, that kind of sure. thing. Um, and so that didn't work. 
obviously. And also the thing is, is then it becomes like a snack because you're still hungry and then right. you still have the other meal. You know yeah, what I yeah. mean? And I was at daycare and they don't give, they don't care. Of course. They just, you know, they, they'd rather school. you eat because you're happy and quiet. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then I'm trying to think. But how bad, like we always talk about how fat kids are bullied in school, right? Yeah. And this is something I saw myself. I was never fat, but I mean, it's the easiest thing for mm-hmm. kids to pick on. Yeah. How bad was it? Um, I maybe had like one or two friends that I was close to, but what I would do, it was more about wanting to avoid situations that would remind people. So I, you know, I remember there was, you remember the presidential fitness test? Of course. Okay. So like, I remember the night before, like on my nightstand, like banging my ankle against the nightstand to try and like sprain my ankle so that I wouldn't have to to do that and it didn't work um because <laughs> you have to take that test in front of everybody yeah so you knew you were gonna look like an ass yeah and I, the other thing i remember doing pretty frequently was trying to find out like when we would have to do the bus evacuation because you have to jump out of the back and i remember one year um probably in like second or third grade the bus driver made a comment and so from then on i what did, did he say did he ask you if you were the bus no, <laughs> he, uh, when I was jump- she, when I was jumping out, she said, oh boy, just something like that. And, but it's enough yeah. to get, you know. Yeah. And so from then it was like, I was obsessed with knowing when the bus drills were going to be so I could like play sick. So it, it, I, it sounds like you weren't actually emotionally eating. This is just kind of like a hobby. Mm-hmm. And were you confused why you were so much bigger than the other girls? Yeah, I mean, there are things that I would notice, like particularly their legs. Um, they're just like sticks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Like thinking back, I just remember more of like being different and not necessarily making the connection because I felt like, especially that my friends that were more well off, like I felt like they got like much better food and and seemed like they ate more. They got to go out to eat more. Um, so I didn't make the connection at first. It was just more of like this is like how I am. Okay. So it wasn't even particularly your weight. You were just kind of like an outsider, but that's because of your personality or yeah. social status or whatever. Yeah. And also, I mean, you know, just being, at least in grade school, being smarter and always sort of being separated for one reason or another, yeah. like whether it's to go read with a different class because they were ahead or, you know, things like that. Um there's always some sort of separation. So, uh, you know, also in my elementary school of like 1,500 kids, my, there was a like support group for parents or for kids who had divorced parents. There were five kids okay. in a school of 1,500. So wow. it's like in lots of different areas, I was always sort of separated, you know? But that's, you dodged a bullet because if you were someone who was exclusively bullied for your weight mm-hmm. and especially at a young age and or getting it at home that would have had real long-term psychological consequences <laughs> i feel don't you think well i mean in elementary school it wasn't bad i mean middle school is when it really like ramped up i think um and part of that is because kids start to notice more like sure. differences you know um and it was mostly from boys um and then some of my friends and that, it, it, I mean, it did have some psychological effects. Like I remember my last day of school in like fourth or fifth grade, um, my two best friends, um, like the last day of school, there's like, oh, there's something we wanted to ask you, um, you know, on your last day. And I'm like, okay. And I thought it would be something about like my parents or, you sure. know, whatever. And so they're like giggling and they, and they said, why are you so fat? Ooh. And I thought, hmm, those are those are my best friends, and so that sort of those are girls. Yeah, t- obviously. Well, well, yeah, girls, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. So um, you knew they talked about you behind your back. Yeah, and so I have really. I mean, I know this sounds kind of sad, and I've never really had like a best friend, like a best girlfriend. Sure. Um, and there have been times when I I thought I did, and this is like a total like girl only girls I think behave this way, where maybe I considered someone my best friend, sure. but they didn't consider yeah. me their yeah. best friend. Okay, I got to ask you this question. This always happens with the big girl. Were you the fag hag and the girl that all the gay guys came out to? No. Well, you asked me this when I was on your show yeah. last time, <laughs> if I ever dated anyone who ended up being gay. Um, and no, and that might be because I never dated anyone in that school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But um, I'm trying to think. There's probably only one guy, but 
the lag time also might have been a little longer because I did grow up in the South. Sure. So sure. for them, it might have been more college. <laughs> okay. Um, let's talk about being heavy and date. I feel, I feel, even though you use the word fat, I mm-hmm. feel like it's such a loaded word that I don't feel comfortable using it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll just say heavy. Uh, I'm short. And I know all the data tells me that if I go on dating apps, that's the first thing women select against. So I get it how there's a big percentage of population that right away, it's like, we're not even having this conversation. What's it like dating when you are, let's say even 200 pounds mm-hmm. and 5'4"? Yeah, I mean, the problem is, is the websites don't make it easy because they also kind of help you. And the ones that aren't tailored to you know a certain person, Um, or type, they all do things like, you can't select I'm fat or I'm heavy. It's like curvy. And so a guy's definition of curvy is different than like our current media's definition of curvy. Right, of course. Um, And so you do that. You you know, I'm trying to think, I really didn't do much online stuff. I'm old, I'm 42. How old are you? 43. Okay. So I mean, before I stopped, I basically stopped dating after I wrote a book about dating. So I haven't dated in, you know, 15 years or so, (laughs) as far as like had a boyfriend in like 15 years or so. Um, I mean, you kind of feel like if you establish that connection first, like on the phone and all of that, um, you know, maybe they'll see past it and all that sort of thing. Um, And I actually did have one experience that I wrote about in, in my book where... Um, you know, this guy that I've been dating for maybe a month or so, um, you know, he came to me and was just like, I don't think I can, I don't think we should date anymore. And we seem to get along and all that kind of stuff. And, um, I remember (laughs) this is the conversation on the phone and I thought, well, you know, this is like such a girl thing. I thought, well, let me get some sympathy out of this. And I said, is it because of how I look? And not in a million years did I think he would say yes. Did he? He did say yes. Wow. How did that feel? Um, it did not feel good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I promised that I would lose weight for him. And he said, okay. And so we we did weekly weigh-ins. Oh, this is this sounds healthy. This is in 2000. Um, I ended really up dropping about 70 pounds. I was basically- 70? I was basically a functioning anorexic. I remember the day after we had that conversation, I had gotten a, a bagel- um, the day before, I ate, I ate only that bagel for an entire week. That's all I had for an entire week. How how were you not like lightheaded? I know, and, and I worked out like weights and cardio twice a day. Um, Is this guy like a stud? No, <laughs> no, he had like a Russell Crowe thing kind of going. Russell Crowe's a stud. Oh, you mean he hit you? But like the end of A Beautiful Mind. Okay, no, just okay. kidding. Okay. I, I don't. I, it, it, is it just that you like it, it break down that psychology for me? Like, yeah, I mean, well, and the thing is, is we weren't even still together. Like, I he was, you know, I don't think he was dating, but he was definitely having sex with other people. Okay. Um, and then after several months went by, we we met up, and you know, I obviously dropped a lot of weight, and um, it just like it wasn't he wasn't it wasn't happening, and then a couple months later, he asked me to come over. And I went over and I knew he was dating someone at the time. And I remember opening the closet and I saw a bag from this store called Avenue, which is a plus size girl store. And I was like, his girlfriend's fat? Are you wow. kidding me? <laughs> Wait, so what's that like buying? Like, you're- And then I gained it all back. Like, I don't even remember how soon. I just like remember from that one day of getting to like that, I'm about to faint weight. And then the next thing I know, it was all back. Uh, God, and back to Avenue. <laughs> What's it like buying clothes when you're that size? I mean, you you, t- you take pride in your appearance, mm-hmm. and at a certain point, everything, I'm guessing, looks like a tent. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot better now. When I was a kid, I mean, it was horrible. Um, when I was in middle school and high school, I would buy men's shorts and pants. Okay. Um, and then just try to do my makeup and have, you know, nice hair and jewelry and that sort of thing. But I was basically wearing men's clothes. Okay. Um, I wore women's socks because my feet are small. I, I <laughs> just in LA over the weekend. Like it's not, that's not as bad as it could be. No, I mean, it was the 90s. So I was yeah. lucky everything was oversized. Yeah. 
to begin with. Uh, but I couldn't wear like those little slip dresses and things okay. that, that the girls would wear. Um, I mean, it's actually, you know, it's funny that you bring it up because I'm now in a place where I am the lowest size at plus size stores. And oh, hell yeah. But also I can shop in regular stores like I'm toward the top in a regular store. Um, but. I don't know. I'm like having a problem, like letting go of like my stores. Yeah, because I, I mean, mean this part is of your it identity. is the vanity sizing too. Like this dress is a size zero. <laughs> How many zeros is it? What? That's what I'm saying. Is uh, they they do this like vanity sizing? It's like zero um, through I think six. Okay. So I'm now a zero. It, that's like <laughs> Elaine Bryan or whatever. Elaine Bryan's zero. Uh, Torrid, yeah. Okay, I don't even know these names. Well, uh, do you know Hot Topic? Yes. It's like the, the plus size. Wait, it's there's owned a, by the same There's company. a Fat Topic? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's Torrid. <laughs> it's, okay, so it's it's which version of the cure do you like? Do you like the yeah. 80s cure or do you like Robert Smith now? I know. Okay, got it. No, it's owned by the same company. How, and this is a serious question and, I, and just, I, I know it's intense. How much, and because- all I'm seeing is through media and and I'm trying to empathize with someone in your position. How much of this is like causing like self-loathing, right? I feel like there's a lot of when girls are that big and they're being treated this way, mm-hmm. There's that comes with the territory. Well, it goes in two ways because like on one hand, people say, oh, I don't look like a Victoria's Secret model. I don't look like the flat chested models on, on runways and all that. Sure. But then on the other side, even though... I like her that, you know, you have Lizzo where it's like, well, what if I look like that and I'm not happy? What if I don't sure, want to look like sure, that? Sure, sure. And, you know, I don't want to deal with the the issues that, that come with that. So it's like you can't win. Right. So I think if you're, if you're not like, oh, I'm embracing my, my body and I don't want to change and I'm not going to lose weight and all of this stuff. I mean, I almost feel like it's more in that direction now that i feel bad because i i do want to change um have you did you try like a ton of diets that just didn't work or were you like it's a lost cause uh no uh not like different diets like not like cabbage diet and sure atkins and south beach and all that kind of stuff um so my after gaining weight back from when i lost it for that guy um, I, I got to tell you, I mm-hmm. find that very upsetting mm-hmm. that you, th- this is going to sound Dr. Phil and I don't care. It's how I feel to lose weight for someone else instead of for yourself. It's, it's disturbing to hear. Well, and how long did it last? <laughs> right. But I mean, it, it's like, I, I think you're a quality person. So this is the kind of thing. And I'm, it's easy for me to say on this side of the, uh, desk like but this is the kind of thing you or someone else should do for themselves and not for some asshole Mm -hmm. who's banging fatties on the side who shop at lane bryant or avenue whatever (laughs) and it's like that's like the old lady plus store size okay it's not cool like torrid you know (laughs) is that true (laughs) it's true (laughs) okay i'm learning so much today (laughs) it's like where a plus size grandma would shop so again how are you what techniques did you try throughout your life? Um, or is this kind of thing where you're like, fuck it, I'm coasting at this. This is No, me. I didn't mind. I liked lifting weights. Okay. And, that's, and I actually think that's a really good place for someone who's overweight to start if they just want to do exercise. Because immediately you're going to have an upper hand and like lower body strength. Yeah. Um, in other areas. And it just gives you like those immediate like like positive Reinforcement. Ga- yeah, gains yeah. and all. Like I can do this. You know, I can do leg lifts better than you know, half the people at the gym. Sure. Um, and I'm trying to think, like, that was called Body for Life, I think. It's, like, basically a pyramid-style weightlifting um, regimen. And then sort of, like, as my career progressed, I got a little bit more money. Like I said, that freedom came back, and that's when, like, I can go out to eat more and, you know, make all of these bad decisions. And then I had, like, very – public jobs at the time um and one in particular you know was carried on all of these networks and I th- at that point i was at 320 or so and are you weighing yourself throughout this period yeah that's the thing is i don't think i really was because i don't remember much in between like i don't remember going back into the 200s then to 250 right. then to you know whatever what how did you how did you find out you were 320 um I think at some point, I mean, I think I might have been researching, um, 
like surgeries and things. Okay. And um, our friend Anne um, had mentioned the lap band to me, and um, that's what I decided to do. Let's talk about that because this is something I'm very curious about. How did your friends bring this up? How did you emotionally receive it? And what advice would you give to someone? This is a, a lot of questions, mm-hmm. but this is really the meat for me. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone whose friend is morbidly obese? Uh, what could they do, if anything? Sure. Um, I think I brought it up first, okay. but she had already... Um... Because I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the fat person knows they're fat. Yeah. If you tell them, hey, your your weight's out of control, they know. They they know every five minutes mm-hmm. of their life, right? That's yeah. That's not a question. I mean, Basically, the the biggest thing I would say, especially if someone came to you about taking a surgery option, it's not an easy way out. Yeah. Um, I know for sure because I gained it all the way back after the lap band. Um, But, you you know, you still have to watch what you eat. Um, You still can't eat junk food, that sort of thing. Um, Or, you know, bad calories. But I would say for me, if someone were to say something to me, they have to know something about me other than... That I'm overweight. I mean, they would need to know, like, my lifestyle as far as, like, my job and my commute and that sort of thing. Like, not like, why don't you just work out in the morning? It's like, well, I start work at 6 a.m., so, no, I can't work out at 4. Just like those – because then it just sounds like you're automatically coming with me where I have to say what sounds like excuses, you know? And so I'm already feeling bad about it. Um, I think it's more of just, like, any time they bring – if someone were to bring something up, um, because most like there's not, I cannot imagine there's ever been a case where I've had a friend and I never talked about it. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So you would bring it up. Yeah. Maybe just like, oh, I shouldn't be eating this, you know, that sort of thing. It's, but if I'm talking to a friend who's fat and they said that to me, I would feel like this is them just keeping up appearances and. Well, you roll your eyes, but I mean, I'm, I'm just telling mm-hmm. you from my perspective, so please educate me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, that would be the impression I got <laughs> that they know it looks bad when they're eating, but they just kind of have to uh, do a social niceties thing. Mm-hmm. Is that incorrect? I, I mean, for me, it would be. Okay. I think it would be, I mean, part of it is acknowledging, like, yes, I know I should not be be doing this. And so, I mean, that right there is giving you a clue. Like, they, they know they're not like blind to their situation and all but of that kind that, of thing. But you're, what I would hear mm-hmm. is a preemptive, don't say anything because I already know and I'm anticipating you saying something, so I'm going to cut you off at the pass. That's how I would Yeah, I mean, there it. could be, I think that's probably more of like a like what a guy would do. Okay. Um, But I think probably like if I were you in that situation and if it was a guy, then probably what I'd be like, I know this. this is basically my cheat day let's do some other like i don't know what help i don't eat, eat out much what's a <laughs> cheat, what's a cheat day <laughs> um well like in the body for life it's basically one day of the week where you don't work out and you eat whatever you want okay. yeah um so if I, I i guess it would be you don't really have ad, actionable advice in the sense that it sounds like it is case by case if i have a friend who's 300 pounds mm-hmm. male or female there's no point. Is there any way for me to broach the subject? Yeah, of course. I mean, you could do things. I mean, the thing is, is like you have to be aware that a lot of people look at your lifestyle and they think that you're healthy. And so if you were to invite someone to the gym, you might think you're doing a good thing. And, and ultimately you are. But they might be intimidated by their first time in the gym being all sweaty, maybe having gym clothes that are too tight because they haven't been in them in sure. forever. Um, so I think you also have to ex- respect that some people want to at least try – to do it alone okay. um, or be alone, at least in, at the beginning stages. So maybe it's something like rather than getting a cab, you walk somewhere and basically just show like you don't care that you're walking slightly slower. Um, okay. You ignore that they're breathing a lot heavier, that sort of thing, um, because that's like the biggest thing that you're worried about is can people hear me breathing like when I'm going up the stairs? Because I think there is, at least for me, it was – Obviously, taking like an elevator was a lot easier, but I was so embarrassed of like, I can't believe she doesn't want to walk two flights of stairs right. that I would walk the two flights of stairs and then instead have anxiety about like basically holding my breath. <laughs> was it, it was at your heaviest is two flights of stairs like a situation? Yeah. Wow. 
Okay. Um, so let's talk about the lap band. Mm -hmm. What made you pull that trigger? Surgery is no joke. Mm -hmm. And what does it entail? Um, well, it was basically, like I said, the um, the situ the, my job situation. I, I was on stage with uh, Rush Limbaugh okay. for a big speech. We were both in all black. And we both slimming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I look like Morticia. <laughs> I know. We both looked basically the same size. And this was Rush at his heaviest as well. And um, you know, I got emails from people saying, like, you know, which one is Rush and just like jokes about our size and all of that. And so that was probably March. Emails from friends? No. Oh, okay. Just from, you know, people that saw it on TV or you Oh, know. you mean like comments? Or people actually emailed you directly? Yeah. So, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Like a, a troll, to use the word loosely. Mm -hmm. Just This is before social media. So, but so yeah. They just, they saw a picture of you and they're like, I'm going to email or this, saw, yeah, or this saw fat girl and make fun of her. Yeah. Damn. That's no <laughs> joke. Okay. Um, so that was probably March 2009. And I... Um, really committed myself to doing all these doctor's appointments that you had to do. Because that's the funny thing is to get surgery, you basically have to be healthy first. <laughs> is that right? Why is yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, they make you do like a stress test where you run on the treadmill because your heart has to be strong enough to make it through. Um, you can't be diabetic. So I was fortunate in that I wasn't diabetic or pre-diabetic. A lot of people have to you, lose. I thought you. I thought everyone who's obese is pre-diabetic. No, a lot of people, they have to lose weight before surgery to get out of that stage okay. some people it just also depends on your insurance and your doctor like if you have cash then they'll probably just do it on anybody okay but your in insurances have different things they have to go through um like you have to be on weight watchers for six months you have to have lost this amount of weight before okay all those types of things is um, that also to make sure that this lap band will stick that this person has demonstrated the commitment without the lap band so i think probably for the weight loss part okay i don't think for like the stress test i mean okay. that's i think to make it through the surgery sure um I mean, also, I was young. Let's see, 2009. How old was I? 32. So 31, 32. Um, so I was sort of young, um, certainly younger than a lot of the older folks that get it now that really um, are on the on the line as far sure. as like whether or not their body can, can take it. Um, so all of those appointments I did as quickly as I could, and I got the surgery on the end of May of 2009. And so that what, is that, what does that entail? Um, well, it was laparoscopic. So it's a little port that they put on the outside or well, it's inside you, but, um, and then a band that goes around the top portion of your stomach. And so they put fluid in through the port and the band itself is sort of like an inner tube. So the more liquid they put into the tighter it gets. Right. And so when they first put it in, there's nothing in there because you're so swollen and everything that it basically is functioning. Um, and then you're on a liquid diet for, for several weeks. What, what liquids are you drinking? Uh, protein shakes, chicken okay. broth, that kind of okay. thing. And then... Um, I got to ask you, I'm sorry, this is mm -hmm. gross, but I have to ask. What does a liquid diet do to your like bowel movements? Are you just shitting water? <laughs> well, I think because there's protein in things, like I don't remember it being different. Okay. You sorry, know? I got, had to it's know. It's less frequent. Okay. Yeah, because you're digesting it. <laughs> your body needs everything. It's yeah. Getting, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of that weight comes from the liquid phase, right? And then when you're finally able to eat food, I mean, you, I, even to like, even now I still eat with baby utensils, okay. um, just to like help with your, your bite size and that sort of thing. And because that lap band is like right here. I, I got to ask you, mm -hmm. when you're eating with baby utensils, do you ever tell yourself, open wide, here comes the airplane, <laughs> and pretend you're 9-11? Yeah. <laughs> that I'm the tower? Yeah. Or you could be Muhammad Atta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he lost a lot Stop of weight. Stop making me smile. He lost a lot of weight that day. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of calorie burning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he felt the burn. Yeah. Um. So how you, so having this... Did you tell people you were getting this lap band surgery? Uh, no, including okay. my family. Wow. Um, Why didn't you tell them? Well, I, you know, I take that back. I, w I planned on not telling them. And then at the last minute, like a week before, I felt bad in case something were to happen. And so I did tell uh, my mom and my sister. Okay. Um, but I didn't tell my dad. Okay. Um, I can't remember when I told him, but I did eventually. And uh, 
you know, so that first time I lost 70 pounds. Wow. That seems to be like the go-to number. Sure. <laughs> um, but then as you're able to eat food, you sort of learn like a workaround. You learn what kind of foods go down easily. Crackers, milkshakes. You so know. you're hacking your own you're, yeah, workaround. You're hacking you're, it. You're, yeah. uh, they're called slider foods because it's things that are really crunchy, like potato chips, all that kind of stuff that go down easy. The things that are hard, no thank you, the things that are hard are meat, steak, shrimp. Sure. Those types the, of things. Things you have to... Work, the, yeah, a lot. the good yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so what would happen is you eat that, and then I learned how to throw it up very quickly. Okay. Um, because it's just stuck right here, and sure. it's very uncomfortable. Because the lap band, you have a rubber band kind of was at the top of your stomach? How does, yeah. What is it literally it, well, happening? Well, it makes like a little stomach on top of your normal stomach. Okay. Um, so that's the good thing. Like, I mean, I was a functioning bulimic, which I know sounds silly, but... The good thing is, is it doesn't make it into your stomach, so you don't have all of the acid and teeth sure. problems yeah, that you would yeah. if you're a real bulimic. So it was just easier to just make myself throw it back up. Um, My friend was bulimic, and she loved to eat ice cream because it came up cold. <laughs> I mean, wasn't in there very long. Yeah, so yeah. it's just things you remember. Um, so, so it must have been exciting to see the weight come off again. This is again, right? This yeah. is after the guy. Yeah, I mean it I because I had gained even more weight after, I didn't get to as small as I was sure. before. And even when I had lost weight for the guy, um, I was still not um like normal. Sure. I was still considered overweight. Um I was probably about um I'm probably about the size that I am now, maybe a little smaller. How during this whole period, how much in the background music in your mind is your health a concern and having a heart attack and all that stuff? Um <laughs> I think it I think it was a concern because I was sort of conditioned to think it should be. My my dad okay. has had probably five or six heart attacks. Lisa. Um, but then I always rationalized, but he was a smoker. Okay. Well that's true though. That's not, <laughs> smoking's like liter smoking is worse than being obese. Yeah. He stopped smoking, but okay. that was I think okay, after boy. the second heart attack. So oh, but not the fifth. Oh no, no so two it took two. Yeah. Okay. So, and then uh <laughs> Some people need two wake up calls. I know. Some people need five. Yeah. Um so I think it was definitely a concern, but I was still in my 30s then. You know, I was never pre-diabetic or any of those other things. But after the weight came back, not all of it, but I, I saw 300 again. And that's when it was, um, you know, I have to do something. And I was starting to, like, be tired at night. I Did I ever send you that before and after photo of my feet? No. no. Carney Wilson, I read her memoir about mm -hmm. uh, gut feelings. Yeah. And she talked about, I think she was 400 and she's like mm -hmm. 5'1". She would talk about how she had to walk a certain way, like on the sides of her feet because her weight was so severe. Yeah, I don't know if this is like The appropriate. other thing she did is when she was on planes, she would talk to the people next to her so that they'd see she's a real person, which is like the worst of all worlds. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. Wow. So that was uh, in April. What was it? Oh no, this is, it has the after date. Okay. So that was before I had the... Before I decided I need to do something else. And at the time, I thought the something else was I hadn't um, had my lap band refilled in a while. And so I went to get it refilled. And Oh, they're telling me in the chat room I have shit on my face. One second. You were saying? So um, I think by that point, I was looking for you know something else and the doctor that i saw um you know the the lap band was kind of a fad and they weren't they were no longer doing it and he had said that gastric bypass was now sort of the gold standard because it had held the test of time you know it's been around for 30 or 40 years um and i think probably because i did not care um I was just like, yeah, that's fine. Let's do it. And it was obviously like a more, I think you dropped something. Yeah. Um, it was yeah, obviously more an invasive surgery than even Shh. lap band. Hold on a second. Sometimes there's just so much beauty in the world. I can't take it. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, because there was, I, I, I didn't care. Like, yeah, let's do another surgery. Like, who cares? But what do you mean who cares? It's a surgery. They're cutting you open. I know. But I mean, what, like, the alternative is, 
What, that I die? Sure. I, uh, yeah, okay. I, I didn't care is what I'm saying. Were you like, I don't care in the sense of like suicidal or I don't care in this, like, it's that bad? I mean, like, I was I wouldn't actively try to do anything. But kind of like I've given up, like I, I'm at the end of my rope. Yeah, I don't think I can do it myself. Okay. Were you scared to go under the knife? Here's no. another question. If you did it once and it didn't work, wasn't there the concern of this probably won't work either? I'm doomed. Um, yeah, but also I thought at this point, like, because I did, like, the big surgery, at least no one will, if, if something happens to me, at least they'll think I've done everything I could to, I would have tried. So that surgery that I had last year, I didn't tell anyone, okay. um, except for um, the person that picked me up from the hospital. Okay. Um, I tried to take an Uber, but they wouldn't let me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? The, like the they hospital? have to have a real p- a person pick you up. Oh, I thought like the Uber driver saw you're like we're not getting in this car. No, <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not a truck. Um, uh, so, I mean, it started working though pretty quick. What exactly? Mm-hmm. How do you change your lifestyle after getting that uh, last surgery? Well, the good thing about gastric bypass is um, there are obviously things that you can do, like you can still eat bad foods, but it was a lot easier to eat good foods. Um, and so that's really what I did. And then the other thing it does is because they take out a bunch of your intestines and two thirds of your stomach, um, things with sugar in them go to your intestines faster and it makes you sick. It makes your heart race. It makes you nauseous. No, thank you. Um, and it just doesn't feel good. They, it's got the worst name possible. It's called dumping syndrome. Okay. Well, I mean, did you ever do that by accident somehow? Yeah, I, I've, I've definitely had it before. Um, I remember the first time I did it on my YouTube channel, um, I posted a video of it, of like how it felt. You just get extremely tired. There are people that, I mean, food addiction is so bad sure. that there are people that just do it anyway, you know? Wow. Um, That's scary. Because you're only, you're only sick for like 20 minutes and it's just like your heart breathing, you know? I, I don't know. I, I don't understand liking even my beloved pink bubblegum no. ice cream to the point where like I'm going to feel out of sorts mm-hmm. for 20 minutes. No, I get it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not a good a good feeling. And the other sort of workaround is like, say, I can't eat a full size Snickers. It would de- like half of it would make, would make me sick. But a you part- shouldn't use that word. It's different when they call each other that <laughs> Milky Way. Milky Way. Yeah. Okay. Almond, almond yeah. joy, mounds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but a person with gastric bypass, they could eat, say, a mini Snickers once an hour all day. Okay. Now you're still getting like 1,500 calories yeah. at least. So you're not helping yourself, but you're not getting sick either. So it's still choices that you make. It's like, And that's the, th- the other thing that I think why people are hesitant to tell people about surgery or even bring it up is because they think it's an easy way out. They think that. Um, oh yeah, you're late. You're yeah, up. just just stop eating, fatty. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like, oh, you need surgery, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, because there are plenty for. I mean, obviously, I know that you can regain it because I did after one other kind of surgery. Um, there are plenty of people that. I mean, there are people that have been on Biggest Loser who lost it all, then got um, some kind of surgery, and then gained it all also. Um, but you know, they named that show after Tom Woods. <laughs> A very failed podcast. He told me it was named after you. Well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not even verified. Mm. You are verified. I'm verified, Hell bitch. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Terry Shabrick's not verified. Yeah, that my favorite Navy SEAL. So <laughs> He's not a SEAL. Well, not a literal SEAL. Well, so, no, he's not a Na- He wasn't in the Navy. Well, not just fake news. From, <laughs> <laughs> that's just deranged fake news from Agitprop. Uh, how has your weight trajectory what, how does it change right after the surgery? Like, what's the trajectory like? Um, yeah, I mean, first it's it's down because I am like having liquid calories. I remember I would keep track in this app called My Fitness Pal. Yeah. And just because it was so, like, I, I like I like really got off on it. Like, I'd be like, my calorie today is five. Like, that's how many calories I've had today. I thought it was so awesome. But that is anorexia. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, I didn't have a choice. Like, especially before the surgery, it was like you can have water and you can have clear broth. Okay. Well, if I don't like chicken broth, what do you want? What can I have? Beef broth? No, I mean, I, I didn't like the taste of it. So okay. I was like, it's, I'd rather just like not eat. I'm but, hardheaded. But weren't you getting lightheaded? Not really. I mean, I had plenty in store, okay. you know? <laughs> well, that's the, this this idea people have that if you're 
like, uh, well, if if you have to lose weight, I'm going to starve myself. And it's like when you're that heavy, it's not possible to starve yourself because yeah. you can't be a starved fat person. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is like you might be tired from like activity, but maybe it's activity you hadn't previously done. Sure. You know? And your cardiovascular system shot. So yeah, mm-hmm. you're going to be tired, but it's not because you don't have the nutrients. It's because your cardio is so terrible. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I help like as far as like feeling when I did Whole30 – Prior to gastric bypass, I felt more um, like side effects from that than I did from the pre-surgery and post-surgery diet. Hey, guys, want to tell you about our new sponsor, Real Paper, R-E-E-L. It's like a play on words. Two-ply toilet paper, that's for losers. You want three-ply and you want incredibly soft. So real toilet paper is not only super soft and durable, it's made entirely out of... (laughs) Bamboo. You're not if you're not wiping your ass with bamboo, how are you even listening to this show? You are an abomination against nature. Real changes all that. You can pick and choose when you get your shipment. And for every roll of toilet paper you buy, it helps people in need get access to clean toilets. Zero ply for them, three ply for you. If you go to realpaper.com, R-E-E-L paper.com. And use promo code MALICE, you get 10 per- ten bucks off your first subscription or 20% off a single purchase. And you know what? Free shipping. Try it. Have a party. Have your bamboo toilet paper three-ply in your house. It's free shipping. Just 20% off a single purchase. People are like, oh, where'd you get this toilet paper? Oh, uh, you probably haven't heard of it. What are you using? Two-ply? Mm, that's cool. Uh, I guess that's interesting if you're a loser. I use three-ply, which is 50% better. And I'm helping poor people get bathrooms. So that's a virtue signal. Let's get back to the show. What are the risks of gastric bypass? Just the same as any other um, surgery. And then also, if you already have an issue with like acid reflux, it might get worse. I mean, do people die under the knife or is that very rare? I think it's very rare okay. just because that's why they do all these tests ahead of time. Got it. You know? Yeah. Um, this is me talking. I'd ha- I have to ask, did you want to? Did you ask them if you could keep your colon and your like I mean your intestine and your stomach? <laughs> no, but um, when you sign stuff, it does say that you can't have it. Okay, <laughs> damn it! I was gonna. I ask. wanted the lap band. Right. Oh yeah, like as a souvenir. <laughs> Get so I didn't ask, but I didn't have to ask because like it was already written down, which leads me to believe a lot of people ask. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's, it's part of your body. Yeah. So, uh, what is your relationship like now with food? Um, it's funny because you're a lot more aware because, you know, I mean, a lot would have to happen because my stomach is the size of an egg. A lot would have to happen or not happen for me to actually be hungry. Right. Okay. So. I, but hunger is psychological often. It's not that's physiological. What I'm saying. Yeah. So at night when I'm like, uh, you know, after I've had dinner and I'll have like a, a string cheese or something, it's like, I know I'm not hungry, but for me. You know, people talk about being an emotional eater, and I am not an emotional eater except for counting boredom as an emotion. Sure. And that's what it's always been for me, like not being stimulated. And then when I think back to being in school, you know, sort of like thinking everything was boring, like I never had to do homework because I could do it while the teacher was talking and then pay also pay attention. Um, you know, that everything was boring, tests, all that stuff was boring. And um, so now, like particularly at home, there's nothing on TV. Generally, you know, if I'm watching like some dumb Bravo show, which isn't oh, yeah. particularly stimulating, I always I used to say that Bravo made me fat <laughs> because I would snack during Bravo because I wanted to stay up, right, to like finish the episode, but then I would eat to have something to do, uh, and so I find myself going into that cycle sometimes when, you know, it, the the one thing is that I can't eat the quantity, you know, even if I'm like having yeah. a string cheese, like I can't eat like five string cheeses or you know whatever. Um, but I do have to like actively like stop myself. Like it does, the habit doesn't go away. What do you think of this whole haze idea? Healthy at every size. Um, I mean, I'm sure there are healthy people that are large, but you know, for me, like all of my stats were good, but my joints hurt, you know, I felt older than I was. Um, I mean, I, I got the surgery at 41, um, and you know, I was already seeing like swelling in my feet, swelling in my in my joints. Um, but if you look at like 
glucose and or blood sugar and um, my h- blood pressure and all that kind of stuff. Like I was healthy. Was your blood type Mrs. Butterworth's? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. Um, if- it's funny because I actually am. Al- it's funny that you would say that because I'm I am allergic to maple syrup. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know that, that was. A I'm thing. allergic to maple. Um, no, my but my, but my blood wor- type was probably more like cheese was. I love cheese. <laughs> <laughs> if you were talking to Lisa, a Lisa who's watching this, mm-hmm. what is there anything you could tell her or sh- you know that, that she would be receptive to? Um, I would say it's okay if you don't want to tell people because that's the other thing is I feel like there's like that you have to talk to somebody about like everything in your life. I am not someone that likes to share those types sure. of things, which seems really silly. That would I, not only would I talk about this, but I would talk about it with you. Um, but at least you're being respectful, so I appreciate that. Good point. Um, but like for for me, I went on YouTube. I looked up people that had done it um, because you know you don't have to be motivated or um, you know talk to someone that you know. I mean, you can go and get it from from strangers on the internet. Sure. <laughs> I mean, and that's what motivated me to do my own videos although i hadn't posted it until you basically convinced me to post them um but i think like there's nothing wrong with like looking for information and if there's like that voice in your head that's saying you know what i don't feel like lizzo like i don't have that tempo um then you know you don't have to feel bad for not believing all this stuff from the media about healthy at any size i didn't even know that it was an acronym oh hey um, yeah oh yeah <laughs> It's a thing. Um, but I think that's a, the hardest is like it's coming from both from both sides. Um, and I'm trying to think like who probably was the first person I told that I was going to get the second surgery. Um, Do you wish probably you- Chris? Sorry. I was going to say Chris Barron, the oh, guy that picked, I love him. Chris, took me oh, to the he's airport. The best. Or, he's the one that took me to the hospital. He's the best. Yeah. Um, is there something that you could have told yourself to have gotten the surgery earlier? Um, don't be afraid that people will think you're a failure for doing it. Yeah. And here's the other thing, and I'm not saying this to be mean, I'm sure you're gonna if you're three hundred pounds at five four, people are judging you already. Mm-hmm. So you're paying that price. Yeah. You're, you're getting judged. So fine. Let them think I'm a failure. Mm-hmm. It's better than thinking I'm a failure than thinking I'm like a a ham planet. Well, and also if, not just even a failure of getting the first surgery or the second surgery, but that I failed at the first. But I, I mean, I, I think that's so dumb mm-hmm. because if you want to be a writer, you're going to have that book that doesn't get sold, blah, blah, blah. I have right. three. Sure, right. But I mean, you have to persevere, <laughs> right? So to me, I what I perceive it as this person is willing to do what it takes. They have a problem. They they can't do it themselves. They don't have the self-control or whatever mm-hmm. it is, the, the tools. I don't know what the term would be, right? But they're like, this is a problem. I'm not pretending it's not a problem. And I'm going to take radical measures. And you know what? Here's the other thing. If you've got a clogged uh, toilet and the plumber's really lazy, but he fixes it, that's fine. Like, I don't need the hard work. <laughs> I need the results. So if it's like, here, take this pill and you lose weight, great. As long as it have like side effects, you know. Yeah. Well, and that's the other thing is, even if you feel like people will think you're a failure, um, or if you feel like you're a failure, or it's like a shortcut. I mean, you'll quickly realize once regain starts, and you have to get back in control um, that it's not a shortcut. I, I think. I mean, obviously, at the beginning, it is a little bit of a shortcut, and I, it's also a mental thing. I mean, it helps you when you're losing like a pound or two a day. I mean, that's like an awesome yeah. like mental. Thing to to keep you going. I lost. I've been losing a pound a day the last uh, couple of weeks. It's mm. been great. It might cap, cap, uh, catch back up with you. Don't don't. Why would you do that? I'm just saying. Beware of the regain. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh man. Oh, I, I I thought this episode was gonna go one way and it went another. <laughs> I'm inspiring you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that's the word I would use there, Lisa De Pasquale. <laughs> um, let me circle back to this again because I don't know that I have received a good answer if you have a friend if i have a friend Mm -hmm. who is morbidly obese it sounds like you're saying and you're you're only one person you can't Mm -hmm. speak for everybody that it's really nothing i can do it's on me to wait until they broach the subject with me um no not necessarily okay um 
You know, I think what's what the reason why I think this question is hard for me is, I mean, like I said at the beginning, is I am not a person that have had has had close friends. Well, also, so you're not an emotional to... eater. Emotional mm-hmm. eaters then the thing becomes so laden with mm-hmm. other things that it's a landmine. I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, people are definitely, and well, that's the other thing is to be aware of even if they are receptive, you're you're probably at some point going to say something wrong that I don't want to hear. Like a, like right now. Um, just the other day, someone said like, just keep going. And it's like, no shit. I know I need to lose more weight. Like, but just like that kind of day, like it's not something I wanted to hear. Like that day I wanted to be like, good job. I I, I lost my mind (laughs) last night on Dave Raboy, who, you know, Mm -hmm. who's like a bodybuilder and I'm extremely envious of him and I low key hate him because he is such a good person mm-hmm. and such a mensch and genuinely kind, which makes it worse because I'm <laughs> mentally ill and he's not. And we were in DMs and I'm trying to explain this and he's not getting it because he's sane. And he goes, look, I'm lazy. If I can do it, so can you. And I'm like, that's not helping because mm-hmm. I'm working really hard <laughs> and I'm not getting anywhere near you are, yeah. which is the problem. Yeah, it's. I mean, and that's the other thing that's you know it's so hard because there are so many landmines because the other thing when you look on on youtube you know i see someone who maybe lost got to their goal weight in seven months whereas for me it's going to take maybe two years sure um and so you think what am i doing wrong maybe they had more to lose or less to lose maybe they're younger i mean a lot of cases most of them are younger than me um but i think i think it's okay to I don't want to say bring it up in subtle ways because then it sounds like you're trying too hard. But and it also you're going to see right through it. Yeah. I like, mean, send, oh, are you sure you need that, uh, you know, extra chocolate? Like, I know what show. you're doing. Yeah. Send them the link to the show. Yeah. Um, and people can find me. I don't I don't mind answering questions. They can find me on on YouTube or on Twitter or, you know, whatever. I mind. Um, so don't ask me questions. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah, none of this. <laughs> um, I'll just answer like every questions with like. Am I being detained? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like all the midwit, you know, weight loss people that are like, but I'm scared of surgery. And I'll be like, uh. <laughs> um, I, I, I've said this to you in DMs and mm-hmm. I want to say this to you again publicly. I want to thank you so much on behalf of everyone. And I, I do feel comfortable speaking on behalf of them. On behalf of everyone who cares about you that you did something about this. Thank you. Because it is so hard. And again, having lost someone to sit back and watch someone like slow motion killing themselves. And you know that they're not as happy as they could be. I'm not saying you need to be a size actual zero. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying 330 is not optimized for happiness in our culture. It's it's just not. Well, and also keep in mind, you know, it's not just like being unaware or not caring or liking food more. I think on some level, I probably think I don't deserve to have the right body or you know to be the right size or the right weight or to be healthy that that's not a life i deserve and there's you know i don't know when that mindset will leave but there's probably lots of people that feel that way too that they don't deserve happiness or healthiness or any of those types of things the the what what i know that mindset it's very insidious it's very common i bet you you're never going to get there fully but what you tell yourself and what i tell those people is sure you don't deserve to be healthy. Let's valid. You have to validate the mental illness. You're not gonna if you fight it. You're, you're it's a lost cause. Mm-hmm. But you do deserve to be happier than you are now. You deserve to be healthier. Mm-hmm. And when you put it in those terms, all of a sudden it becomes oh okay. That's yeah. That's something I can wrap my head around. Yeah. The goal is just better than before. Yeah. Um. Do you? So what has been the response? This must have been something that drives you crazy. When you tell people, people feel the need to be supportive of their friends, Mm -hmm. right? Have there must have been times when you decide to like lose weight and people just like, oh, you're fine just the way that you are because they think they're helping you. Um, no one's ever told me, no (laughs) one's ever told me that. Everyone's like, thank God, man. It's It's more of like (laughs) afterwards, people are like, oh, you're beautiful no matter what, but I'm glad you're happier. Like, yeah, I mean, that's fine. That's a fine thing to say, I guess. But then, you know, the other thing is like, it makes me question. Um, cause people tell you the truth now, you know, and I'm sure in 65 more pounds, I'll, you know, see this video and be horrified, but you know, well, for you're, me, you're huge. You're a size zero. <laughs> <Your house. laughs> uh, um, 
But I think like then you think people are liars because, well, what about that time when you said I look good in that dress and now I'm looking at this photo um, and I didn't look good. You know, I looked like I mean, when I look at old photos of myself, I feel like my face is like pulled wider. Yeah. But also. I didn't feel like that when the photo was taken. I feel like this. Right. You know, Uh, there's an expression me and my friends who are like into fitness use called a fat girl in a prom dress. And when you have body dysmorphia or eating issues, uh, when someone pays you a compliment, uh, you feel like it's like the fat girl at the prom dress. And yeah, she looks good for her. And mm-hmm. I do think fat girls can look pretty. That's not even a question. But at the same time, she's still the fat girl in the prom dress. Mm-hmm. So like you are not emotionally capable of receiving this uh, compliment. And you think they're just feel the need to patronize you because you're like the lowest status uh, yeah. person physically. Do you want to hear something like really egotistical? I love it. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, this is like, I, I, I kind of feel bad saying this. No, no, you're in the right place for that. Trust, <laughs> know, trust right? me, this I'm is the place. place. This is for ego, yeah. this is the house. <laughs> Louis J. Gomez works here. I, I have nice features, like nice you hair, do. nice eyes. I feel like it would be a lot harder if I were like a plain Jane type of girl. Or what about the Star Jones who looks worse when they're thin because they look like they're sick or something's wrong Mm -hmm. with them? Well, I mean, I haven't gone there yet. I mean, I might end up being that girl. Sure. but (laughs) But it also like my dad was the fat kid. Like he was twice as big as the other kids. My mom is still like 110 pounds. And when my body fat goes up, my face becomes square. Mm-hmm. And like, I look like I'm in my 50s very quickly. And when the body fat goes down, it becomes a triangle and more like my mom. So mm-hmm. this is something I'm very, very uh, painfully aware of. Well, there's like, a, there's a Southern saying that eventually you have to choose between your ass and your derriere. No, between your face and your derriere. Well, I, <laughs> and that's when you lose fat in your face. Oh, you're gonna you lose look your older, ass. but yeah. you know. Your butt looks better. So what it, your weight is? I'm I you're I'm allowed to ask this from this show. Your weight is currently what? Two ten. Uh, uh, probably actually a little lower. Um, that, that's well, good. one thing that we didn't talk about is my recent hospital stay. I don't know if there's well, time for that. Sure, I, I didn't want to go ahead. We could talk about that. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Well, I was this is exciting. Say, one of the side effects that happen is that your body is processing all this fat, and it's like a real burden on your gallbladder. Oh. And okay, so because interesting. your gallbladder is- Because your body's breaking down in a sense. Yeah. And so some people, they have issues because they eat a high fat diet. Others have issue because they're getting rid of the fat they already have. Sure. And I just had a gallbladder attack and- What does that uh, mean? I just had like severe pain okay. in my abs. I thought it was my lungs. Like I'm really bad at identifying pain. Sure. Um, probably because I was fat all my life. So it was just like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so I- had like they called an ambulance and I went to the hospital. They took out the gallbladder, you know, the next wow. day. Okay. Um, and they w- it was like the opposite of a gastric surgery in that they wouldn't let me go- let me go home until I could eat, but I didn't want to eat. And so, I mean, I was like a toddler. You know, I would take like the tiniest bite of a toast and be like, "Is that fine?" You know. And so eventually, I was able to go home. And like I had in November. My dietitian had changed it up a little bit, and this is where it goes back to I'm still in control, and you know this can go up or down. And she basically said have um, less snacks but bigger meals. Um, well, I was finding that I was still snacking in between meals, but sure. I had increased my meals. You know, instead of having a 150 calorie meal, I would have like a 200 calorie meal. Okay. That's still 30 percent more. Yeah, and so I was starting yeah. overall of November. I think I had gained a pound okay. in that month. So I was on the wrong track and then this happened. And in like those five days of being in the hospital and coming home, I lost 12 pounds. Okay. And so it was just like a kick to my system and sort of got me down. Um, And so I had gotten down um, after I came home from the hospital a couple of days to like 208 and then, um, you know, it's just fluctuation. And so I weigh myself and keep track every single day. Sure. But then I look at like the overall picture of yeah, the month. Yeah, I, I same here. I weigh myself every day and, and do a waist measurement. Um, I Two things. Mm-hmm. One is you have to make me a promise right here that when you drop under 200 pounds, you have to buy yourself something as a gift. It doesn't have to be expensive, but something that you look at because mm-hmm. it's important to have physical proof that you, we have all achieved goals mm-hmm. and like, okay, I can do it. I did it once. Because if some, something happens, you go back a, a way, I go, no, no, I did it before. I can mm-hmm. do it again. So you have to promise me you'll do that. Okay. Will you do that? Yes. Okay. 
Um, also, you were talking about the hospital. You were I, in DM. I'm, I'm sure I could tell you this mm-hmm. that you were all excited that you weren't in the fat girl. Yeah. You were the- <laughs> when they came to wheel me out, uh, or they brought the wheelchair to wheel me out of the ho- hospital. It was a normal wheelchair and not like the big fat one. <laughs> so that was, but that's. I mean, these little things are and such, a regular nightgown. But that's exciting <laughs> that you're like. I mean, it, like 300 pounds is is very very big at five four. So to have like normal people, even if it's normal by American size, this is like concrete proof that it's working. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, when you go on a plane when you were that big, did you have to get like special seatbelts and stuff? So I flew to Arizona um, in 2017, and um, the plane couldn't take off. The plane couldn't take off. <laughs> I had to get off because you were too. <laughs> no, <laughs> they might be maybe buy two tickets, which really doesn't solve the problem because the seatbelt's the same size. But whatever. Did they really make you buy no, two? No, no, okay. no. Um, Three tickets. I had to like stand up, basically put it around my legs, and then kind of shimmy down. Wow. So then before the plane, even, I thought they had seatbelt extenders. Well, I was embarrassed to ask for okay. one. And so before the plane even took off, I ordered, like, God bless Amazon Prime now, ordered seatbelts, had them delivered to a person I knew in Arizona because I was going from Arizona to Hawaii. Okay. And so I had the extenders. Um, I bought two, so they would, because they're basically two different kinds. So it's just fit in no case. matter what kind of plane I ended up <laughs> Not on. Not just a hat rack. <laughs> <laughs> and. You know, I think at that point, that was the beginning of, you know, this is now not just the seatbelt being tight. It's that you can't fit in this world anymore. Right. And um, I'm actually really afraid of flying right now and there not being a difference. Okay. This Taking the train up here is the first time I've traveled in the last year or sort of been in public I, other than going to a grocery store. And or, you fit in that seat Target. easily, I'm sure. You know, I took a photo. Um, I'll, I'll put it on my, my YouTube upload this week. Um, not only did I fit in the seat, but I took the photo like down because I was in the seat and was able to cross my legs. I, 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 I got it. I've said this to you before we just started taping and I'll say it to you again. Your affect is so much more ebullient and happy and bubbly. It is so gratifying to see because when you did my show last time and I've seen you on other TV shows, mm-hmm. you were very kind of curt and severe and kind of soft-spoken and to see you kind of, you know, come out of your shell, for lack of a better term, is it, it's it's really I don't know want to say inspiring, but it's it's it makes me happy. Well, it makes me happy to hear you say that. And but <laughs> and, and also makes me happy that you are capable of receiving that compliment on an emotional level instead of hand waving it away because mm-hmm. it's very hard dealing with this stuff to actually receive positive feedback instead of thinking, oh, they're just trying to placate me. Yeah. I, well, you know, when I used to do TV a lot more often before, um, you know, I would say about 30% of the comments would be people from my side um, that were not happy that I was allowed to be on TV. Wow. Um, and, you know, I took a screenshot of one that was like particularly bad um, from from being on Kennedy and... It was just like, I can't believe someone as smart as Lee City Pasquale um, would, you know, be so um, lazy and um, no self-control and, and basically just lots of other words for a bad person. If there's something really sick about calling you like lazy mm-hmm. and lack of self-control and also sarcastically calling you smart, that's just really vicious. I th- no, I th- the thing is, is I, th- I think he was genuine about that, thinking that was I was a good joke. conservative. That was the oh. joke. Sorry. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> this is like when this is like when Terry was on the show and it just went right over. It's like that. Twitter in real life. <laughs> it's like Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I honestly thought this was going to be a lot more intense and emotional. Uh, I know this was a big deal for you, and I know we were both worried about it because this is literally life. There's I have actual case of life and death. So thank you for being so open about this um, and for doing the show. And I don't think this was, this seems like it was a lot easier for you than you thought it would be. Yeah. So that's great. And that makes me feel uh, happy. So we're out of time. What has been your favorite part of the interview? Um, I like that you finally got bigger chairs. They're bigger chairs, right? You are welcome. <laughs>